So hey guys, in a previous video, we took a look inside of this DeWalt FlexVolt lithium ion battery pack. We talked a little bit about how this works and today I just thought we'd see if we could repair the pack. I'm gonna start off by taking a lot of the nickel strips loose so we can actually uh, get to the, the cells for even better testing as well as being able to remove the one we know is bad and one that has actually dropped off since we last uh, charge the pack up a little So we'll look at least two of these cells today and real quick as a reminder or as a refresher here In the last video I took time to draw out this on camera kind of how this worked When we go to 60 volt and it jumps out these here on camera of course It's probably a little more confusing. I should have took time to draw it out individually. So in other words it's 60 volts with these contact points like so, you got minus, plus, it's 60 volts. Hopefully this is a little clearer. Um, with your 20 volt cell pack across here, here, and here. It's 60 volts with the tool being plugged in and jumping out here. We get 60 volts across our terminals based on going through here. And then being in series with this set. The contact closes with this set and there's a 60 volts because before i drew it all together and it's hard to looking back editing the video i saw it probably got a little too busy we're drawing all your normally closed contacts in there as well like it is here in the 20 volt uh, setup where these are actually opened up and this is opened up and we're just simply putting all the plus side and all the minus side together in parallel giving us our 20 volts at our six amp hour instead of 60 volt and two amp hour. But we definitely have some corrosion here and we definitely want to lift up these strips. So I'm going to get started. And of course, uh, one thing I do have to do is, is get this silicone potting removed. But yeah, sometimes we don't, we don't have the, the power we need with plastic tools or non-conductive tools to get in here and pry. We just have to be very careful. Some of these batteries, or some of these cells rather, and the battery is, is still charged up to a pretty high level. And we don't, we don't want for any reason to come across any of these. Another thing to be mindful of, of course, with these is um, with these metal edges and the way these break, they're, they're always going to be sharp, so be extremely careful. It's hard to do it necessarily with gloves on, but at the same time, these things can absolutely rip you open. Not only do I have footage of the previous video, I can look back on for where these wires need to be attached. I have also taken some photographs of both sides here if needed. And of course, as mentioned in previous videos with the, with the minus side, you don't have to be quite as careful coming across. So the negative side isn't that bad, but on the positive side of these cells, you have to be careful not to dig in through this heat shrink because the minus is on that rim so you can actually short the cell out if you're not careful. Working on battery packs is not that bad. You just have to be mindful of what you're doing. So you always have to consider your own risk there. Got a mica insulator here. That unfortunately has been glued down. And this is a positive side, so we got to be careful here.
We definitely don't want to touch to here because we do have voltage here between these of almost 13 volts. I am going to cover up some of the metal strips here because we definitely have some potential back to the tabs. Even though we can't use a plastic pry tool a lot, we can still use it to insulate as we're pulling sometimes. And that green one did break off there. That was the one that was corroded so bad. I smell a familiar smell, almost like PVC cement, if you will. So one of the CIDs has activated, whether I touched it or just the pressure on the tip of one of these positives, maybe. But I definitely smell it. Yeah, this orange one may be able to stay, I'm not sure. And we're starting to see if we can lift this up a little now. But our, our battery gauge here goes from here to here. So the, it looks like the battery fuel gauge just reads off of this, this 120 volt set here. And that's so short it might have to be removed as well going to take time to desolder from my battery fuel gauge here that comes over. Even with a soldering iron, you have to be careful not to touch other metal parts. Of course, we'll short out. But as always, it's, it's a lot of mass, a lot of heat sinking on these, uh, on these solder connections on these strips. So I probably should have got a, um, probably should have got my 200 watt iron out. We'll fast forward through the video where you ain't got to watch it all. A lot of these had the um, some type of liquid ingress there. It may have been from one of the cells, but definitely there nonetheless. I'm only prying on the, the negative side of the battery pack. None of the positives, that's for sure. So that is not folding over like I had hoped. I hope it's not plastic under that one. It could be. Well, yep, look at there. When you scratch off some of the silicone, it looks like every one of these has a little divider or separator. So that one's gonna have it too. So if that would have been open, that should have flipped up. But of course, that's what's, that's what's holding us off there. Nice. And as we go through here, that, that really is the only cell that shows bad. Still zero. These others hit over four volts, so that was their cutoff point, and that's why the charger stopped. I was looking at individual cells here and stopped at four volts, and these, these reached four volts since this one was a dead short. These climbed higher than the rest of these. 